You're welcome to the conversation in New Central Television. This is a program where we bring you up to speed with all the political happenings on the African continent. I am Benga Aborowa. On the program today, we will be looking at the appointment of the new EFCC chairman in Nigeria, Olanipeko Olukoyede. Also on the program, we will be looking at the political situation in Kenya, where members of the Azamio Laomoja political alliance are calling for a change in the law regarding Friday arrest. We'll go on a quick break, and when we return, we'll begin our conversation in Nigeria. Do stay with us. We begin the conversation in Nigeria, where President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's appointment of Olanepekun Olukoyede as the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has ignited controversy due to concerns about Olukoyede's qualifications for the role. Critics argue that Olukoyede, a lawyer, does not meet the criteria outlined in the law that established the EFCC, which mandates a minimum of 15 years of experience in government security or law enforcement. Olukoyede's experience in such agencies only began in 2016, when he was appointed as the Chief of Staff to the Acting Chairperson of the EFCC, although he later served as the Secretary of the Commission. He was suspended in 2020, and some, are, uh, and some assert that his overall uh, experience falls short of the required 15 years. Uh, joining me this evening to discuss this development is Barrister Evans, a fairly legal practitioner who joins uh, from Lagos, Nigeria. Warm well, welcome to you, Barrister Ophelia. Good evening. Good evening to you. Now, let's start off with uh, what you... Could you provide a detailed analysis of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's decision to appoint Olanipeku Olukoyede as the new chairman of the EFCC, considering the broader uh, political context and the fact that, uh, you know, he might not have the requisite... Uh, qualification. What do you make of his appointment? Yes, his appointment came as a surprise because if you look at the Act, um, the ESCC Act, the Act establishing the Commission, um, the Chairman of the Commission is supposed to have certain level of uh, experience and uh, criteria which is set down by law. Okay? Must be first to one who must have risen to the position of an assistant police commissioner or its equivalent in another law enforcement agent or in the ESDC itself. And uh, must be one that have considerable experience of a number of years. Now, the, the person in question who has just been appointed don't really fall within that because um, uh, he, 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 he became uh, the chief of staff to Magu, I think in 2016, and uh, when that happened, he, when Magu was uh, um, later suspended, he went with him. And ever since then, uh, he had not uh, been in the mainstream. He is not, uh, uh, in quotes, uh, a member of the law enforcement agent, other than he has that experience of uh, a chief of staff of one of the past uh, chairman of the commission and the president appointing him despite uh, looking at section two of the uh, commission's act was the one that came with some level of oversight so um the major uh dissent argument in this whole thing is that he does not have the requisite experience which is uh a condition precedent, which is fundamental, uh, and that um, he does not also have the requirement of ranking in terms of what the law says that a person must have been someone who have got into the position of the assistant, for example, and all that. Assistant, uh, and uh, what we have here is a case where you are looking at the two major levels of qualification. He falls short of those two levels of qualification. 
And um, uh, Ufeli, if I may comment, some have argued that Mr. Ulukoyede's experience as the secretary of the EFCC qualifies him for the chairman's role. Can you delve into the legal interpretation of this argument and its validity? It's, it's at the experience of how many years? The experience of how many years? <laughs> I mean, the, the law as set down by the Act have made the mark for which you should have that qualification. The law is straight and unambiguous, okay? So, but if you calculate the number of years he has put into the, he put in while he was uh, the chief of staff of the first uh, chairman, and if you also look at um, the alternative qualification, okay, the alternative qualification provided, you find out that he falls short of both. And as such, in as much as I'm not against the appointment, in as much as I'm not against the appointment, I'm also cautious of the fact that when the law express mention of one thing, exclude the other, where the law has made copious provision, um, such provisions will remain as the law until that act is amended. So, but you cannot make an appointment and use that appointment to amend an extant law. You cannot use the appointment to amend an extant law. So um, the, the fact that he's not qualified means he's not qualified based on the law that established the commission. Okay? And that will mean a lot because um, there's going to be a lot of issues. When so, so, so Barrister uh, Ufeli, where if the gov... I, I mean, the... Uh, President, having heard about this controversy, will probably uh, meet with his Attorney General of the Federation. Is there any way they can force this uh, appointment through? And uh, are there any loopholes in which the government can explore to run through this idea? Because I'm sure uh, they did do an investigation and they did look at his profile before uh, the uh, government handlers and all, uh, uh, announced his appointment. Uh, yesterday, what options are left for the Nigerian government, or they would have to step down this appointment? Is it set in stone? Well, except, except the government is able to prove that he's qualified by virtue of uh, the provisions of the law, if he has the alternative qualification and if he has the rank, ranking qualification, the alternative qualification has to. Uh, an officer and the ranking position itself. If they're able to prove that by the number of years he has put in, and if that is correct, fine. But from what we have seen from the face value, they cannot, there's no loophole here. There's no loophole here. Uh, it, it, it's, it's very clear, the laws are very clear. And, I, and most of the time, when uh, um, leaders of our country make appointments, um, they don't get very thorough on the extant law and the qualification. They make this based on preferences and sometimes by uh, political um, political arrangement. And once the focus is on political arrangement, it has a way of having a backlash on the legal procedure and processes. And when that clash happens, you begin to have problems because there are people who will go to court to contest um, the propriety or otherwise of that appointment. And there's going to be rigorous contest and contestation as to why that appointment should be made and all that. So um, the government ought to have been careful. The government ought to have been proactive. And what we've seen largely how this government have made consistent errors upon errors upon errors. Uh, and I think they should say words of all this. They should be able to be thorough if truly they, they swore, swear to the constitution, they swore to defend the constitution, they ought to defend the constitution the right way and the extant laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But if you now begin to make appointments and you are violating the laws you took an oath to defend and you are entrenching sin by making more errors in an attempt to correct them, you are still enhancing the errors 
I think the best thing to do is to make sure that as early as possible, we draw that appointment and do an appropriate appointment so that the okay. business to come will not... I'll let you complete your thoughts, uh, Evans, to fail yeah, before so I move that, on. So that, so, that, so that in the days to come, we will not be a mesh with too many controversies. We are already having a lot to deal with in our hands. So that is my thought. Thank you, uh, Evans, to fail I would like to bring in our second uh, panelist into this uh, conversation, Victor Oriola, uh, political analyst who's joining from Lagos. Now, Victor, what do you make of this appointment? And also... Uh, does do you agree with the provisions of the law that says you know you need to have about 15 years experience in law enforcement or something uh, related and uh, looking at past appointments uh, the chairpersons uh, the immediate past uh, did meet the qualifications laid out by the EFCC Act uh, Magu met it and uh, the former uh, the immediate past uh, EFCC chairman did meet it but if you look at the their performance and also the circumstances of uh, their departure from the agency, you begin to wonder, oh, you have all this experience and then you end up being disgraced out of the uh, EFCC. So does it really matter in your own opinion uh, if you have this 15 years uh, law enforcement experience? Uh, what do you make of the whole thing? I don't think so, because if you look at it right from uh, the pioneer chairman of the commission, Malam no Rebadu, to Madam Farida, Lamode, Magu, and uh, Bawa, <clears throat> most of the, uh, if you look at the circumstances that led to the ice seat, it's not, it's not uh, something, it's something too tidy. So it's, it's been like that from that, uh, from the, from the pioneer uh, chairman to the present one. And when the issue, of uh, Bawa came in, there was issue also about this uh, his appointment. And the argument then was that, look, he, uh, he was part of the first cadet then that joined the EFCC, and that the commission would prefer that one of their own, instead of bringing somebody, uh, someone out uh, from outside the commission. And if you look at the provision, it says clearly that either a, 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 a commission of police or equivalent, and if, if, you, if you look at it, that equivalent, Mr. Ola uh, Ulukwede, having worked as a secretary of the commission before, and I think he has also functioned in some other department before this uh, present appointment. I think he is eminently, eminently qualified to, 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 to share the commission. Looking at his professional um, uh, history and his, his work history, uh, thank you. Uh, very much, uh, Victor. I'd like to bring back uh, Mr. Evans Faley uh, into the conversation now. Uh, Evans, uh, you're a legal practitioner, and uh, you know the law has different interpretations for different things. The way a layman uh, would explain a particular word uh, might not mean uh, the same in its legal context. Now, let's talk about the EFCC Act, the content of this EFCC Act. The Act mandates that the chairman must have 15 years cognate experience. Uh, can you discuss what cognate experience implies and how Mr. Lukoyede's uh, background either fulfills or falls short of this requirement? How do you envisage the law would uh, translate or explain what cognate experience means? Cognate experience is is uh, is not is self-explanatory. It means 15 years experience. There's nothing to add or remove to it. Okay, 15 years clear experience. That is what 15 years 15 years in clear time. Okay, that's what it means. So he does not have it. Okay, and uh, you see when the express mention of one thing in an in, in law excludes the other. You cannot read into the law what is not there. Fifteen years is fifteen years. The person whom you are whom you have appointed does it have fifteen years? No. The authentic qualification of uh, ranking does it have it? No. So, so if you don't have those fundamental experience that is required by the by the law, it is only wise that you let the public know that there was an error in the appointment and you withdraw it. Okay, 
We should not have laws. It, there's no point having laws that you 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 are you have enacted just for you to violate them. Okay, there's no need for it. So if we don't have laws, we don't have laws. If we have laws, we should not violate them. I'm not exactly what I'm saying. That it is not the right thing. It's not a do or die affair. Hello. It's not a do or die affair. They can walk back the appointment and, you know, yeah, apologize. It's not, it's not a do or die affair. You can walk it back. I mean, because that is a safer uh, arrangement, a safer route when you walk it back and then um, rescind the appointment. Okay? And then now the turmoil in the approach to get. A person who is fit for that job, who is fit for that job, that is what is required. So now, um, Barrister Ufeli, the government has made its position, and uh, you know how government works. Uh, they might find it a very bitter pill to swallow. Uh, there are lots of implications, and you know the the commentary that will come after it. That uh, did you not know about this? Uh, why did you uh, go to the press with this? Why did you announce the appointment if you're going to walk back on it? But if the government decides to be adamant and not follow uh, your recommendations, uh, which uh, you've backed by the extent laws, what are the potential legal implications and challenges that may arise if Mr. Ulukoyede's appointment as chairman is confirmed by the Nigerian Senate? Uh, people are already saying, you know, the Senate is almost uh, like a rubber stamp and they just do anything at the executive wants. You ask and we provide. Uh, considering the requirements of the EFCC Act, interested interested parties interested parties can bring an action against the president and an action restraining the National Assembly from confirming him on the basis of qualification and disqualification. You know, even the presidency is uh, standing. A, even the president himself is uh, a, a, he has a case on appeal on the basis of qualification. Okay, so this issue of qualification, if a person is not qualified, he's not qualified. Um, I know that there are NGOs, CSO, individuals, stakeholders, private bodies, institutions that will bring an action in court if the government decides to be adamant. And the action will be in two ways. First, um, against uh, uh, the uh, National Assembly for confirming him. And once the National Assembly will not confirm him, then uh, there will be an issue. There'll be an issue there. So that is exactly what uh, is going to happen. Um, once you, the, the, the party gets a restraining order, then that restraining order can be used against And when the president persists, it becomes gross misconduct. It, 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 it opens them to the possibility of multiple litigations, yes. Is that? It opens the presidency and the government to uh, litigation, to the, the more susceptible yeah. to litigation. Yes, it, it, yes, yes. Because uh, when the restraining order is, is issued against the National Assembly for confirming him, if uh, they go ahead to confirm him, the National Assembly will now be facing contempt of court. Okay, and if the president insists that it must be the one to, it becomes gross misconduct, and gross misconduct will end the president an impeachment notice. Why? The National Assembly's defiance in, in, in the event that they, they decide to confirm him will lead to uh, contempt of court. So, if you look at the quantum, the new value of this appointment, <laughs> it is better and safer for the president to withdraw that appointment. It is safer and neater. If you want to go for as well account against this government, they already have a lot going against them. This will add up to it and it will escalate. And as a point, the international community will be like a lot of a lot of uh, influences will be contrived from this. So it's better to do the right thing quickly, so we know it's a mistake, a uh, honest mistake that has been corrected. Uh, I, I would pick up from your last point. Uh, you said uh, it's better to do the right thing, and that uh, doing the right thing is a significant issue of public perception. Uh, which uh, is highlighted in this controversy. Uh, what impact might this have on public perception, the EFCC's credibility and its ability to combat corruption effectively uh, if this controversy is not uh, addressed uh, 
as soon as possible. If it's not, if it's not addressed, it means that uh, the, the doubt is already raised. The appointment itself is improper. Uh, what do we call corruption? I mean, it's just because we 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 stretch we, we stretch. Um, what about corruption is illegal behavior. So even this appointment is a corrupt a corrupt tendency. It's, a, it's corruption itself because you have put someone who is not qualified to be there. Okay, so that is that corruption. So it's an indictment on the ESTC. Uh, if the president continue or insist that uh, you know this appointment must stand, that is one. Two. It will it, it, the the commission loses credibility. Okay, it loses credibility because it's standing on the wrong footing, standing on an unconstitutional or illegal um, foundation, and that cannot stand appropriately. So, by the time you look at all that, and for, for the fact that there will be uh, litigation, okay, there will be serious litigation ongoing as to the propriety or otherwise of that appointment. The chairman will not <laughs> will not uh, function effectively, given that there is litigation on, on his appointment. Okay, then uh, we have uh, international communities, we have uh, other influences here and there. Okay, that we put so much pressure on the fact that what is wrong in law. Um, Lord Dennis said that if a matter is void, the law is a nullity. As you cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stand, it will collapse. USC food versus Mark Floyd. Okay, so um, the best thing to do, if I were the legal advisor to the audit, attorney general, I would advise that that appointment be rescinded. Finally, Barrister Evans Fairley, before I let you go, do you believe uh, that in the light of this controversy, uh, there should be a broader discussion? about potential amendments or clarifications to the EFCC Act to avoid such disputes over qualifications in the future? Or is the EFCC Act perfect and it's, uh, the, the way it is in its present form as a government that didn't do its homework in making this appointment? Uh, what could be the implications of such changes if they do go ahead uh, to amend the EFCC Act? I don't think the Act should be amended to suit in an appointment of this nature. I think that the, the qualification so set forth by the EFCC Act is, is fine. What we should do is not to amend the law to accommodate the efficiency. We should rather keep the standard high and then get qualified persons. We cannot say in the whole of Nigeria there are no qualified persons. Get qualified persons to man that position. That is the right thing to do. We shouldn't have laws that we have to downplay or to tune down to fit into uh, our our choices, okay? At the end of the day, we'll end up amending all the laws, bring the standard down, and at the end of the day, we'll be matched with a very uh, difficult situation to go by. So I think we shouldn't do that. The act is fine. Thank you very much uh, for your contribution and time. Barrister, Evan Sufeli, uh, legal practitioner who joined us from Lagos. And thank you uh, to Victoria and I, even though uh, we couldn't communicate as much as we wanted to. Political analyst also joining from Lagos. We do appreciate uh, your time and your contribution. Thank you. You're watching The Conversation on New Central Television. And uh, we'll go on a quick break. When we return, we'll switch gears to Kenya, where Azamio. Uh, lawmakers are calling on a ban of Friday arrest. Uh, we'll give you details of this and more when we return. Please stay with us.